Hello everyone, welcome back to the GP show. Diwali ki shubh kamna. So, what I'm going to do here is Nee, kya tha yaar wo bhi mera. Okay, I'm Jagdish. We are in Jaipur. I'm going to shoot you. Just a few loads. I'm going to make a show for you. हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द जीबी शो आपको दिवाली की बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं मैं आया हूं यहां पे जयपुर शहर में वी कॉल इट द पिंक सिटी टू सेलिब्रेट दिवाली सो द एटमोसफेयर हेयर इज रियली अमेजिंग द वेदर इज ऑसम द सिटी इज ब्यूटीफुल एंड आई हैव अ वेरी गुड फ्रेंड हेयर हिज नेम इज अमन मल्होत्रा ही वर्क्स विद माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एज अ ग्लोबल ब्लैक बेल्ट एंड ही हेल्प्स मैनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन to strengthen their cyber defense he works uh, with the global enterprise and also he is a cyber security scholar with iit and isaac today we are going to talk to him about the city the cyber security scene in jaipur and also a lot of things on ai and what his thoughts about the artificial intelligence in the cyber security data and lot of things let's hear him out <laughs> हेलो ओवन दिवाली बहुत बहुत मुबारक थैंक यू हाँ ब्यूटीफुल सिटी मैन अमेजिंग वेदर हेयर सो यू टेल मी आई एम हेयर टू सेलिब्रेट दिवाली वेयर शुड आई गो कैसा है यहाँ पे दिवाली का सीन दिवाली इन जयपुर इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट यू हैव टू सी कम या आओ यू हैव टू विटनेस द इंटायर सिटी इज लाइक अप ओके Uh, you will see lights all around. You will see all. In fact, there is competition between all the all the markets. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, uh, they compete with each other based on the decoration, based on the lighting, and everything. So go to the old city, and then of course it's a very small city. Yeah. You'll go around, have a look. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the same. So, Diwali is okay. Cyber security का क्या सीन है जयपुर में? Yeah. So in fact. Uh, Uh, I was reading one of the reports from a uh, big four mm-hmm. recently. So, in fact, they listed Mysore, Indore, and uh, Jaipur as the top emerging hubs. Okay, uh, for cyber security, uh, for cyber the tier two mainly they are getting yeah. captured, right? Uh, but Jaipur has been uh, Jaipur has been, we can say, mostly into IT. Mm-hmm. It started with IT. There's a huge presence of NASCOM. I see a lot of startups, a lot of CXO uh, forum discussion, roundtables going on. But are we slowly? They are catching up on security. Uh, this last Sunday, the event we did, mm. such a huge turnout, such a huge turnout. It's not turnout that we don't even see in Delhi, Mumbai. I think people in Delhi, Mumbai are getting bored now. But the security event that we did in Jaipur last Sunday, amazing turnout, amazing. Okay, thank you. And I think you are a part of many such another forums as well, IT, cyber security, and all. I heard your talk that was awesome uh, about you know AI and uh, things. So there is a lot of buzz about AI. What is all about? See, AI has been around for a long time. To be very honest, yeah. uh, but around November twenty twenty two, when this Chat GPT came up, everything, yeah. like, everyone started talking about it. People were uh, writing poetry. Yeah. People were writing. Uh, even children were asking Chat GPT to do their homework. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the that's the point where AI came in the limelight. Mm-hmm. But AI has been around for a long time, and now AI is doing a lot. Uh, it's all over, to be honest. Uh, in fact, at Microsoft, what we are doing is we are investing hugely in AI. Mm-hmm. We have a partnership with OpenAI. We have launched so many co-pilots and all. So AI buzz is real, and I've seen AI in action, to be honest. Mm. So it really helped. It really helps, and the buzz okay. is real. And in maybe I will share one more fact. Uh, I don't know the exact number, so please pardon me on that. Yeah, we. Uh, but like I think it mobile took around fifteen years 
to reach 100 million uh, internet took 7 8 years chat gpt yeah. took just 2 months yeah. you see the volume yeah exactly no amazing uh, i guess the chat gpt is yes, a uh, very relevant example which you are saying and uh, uh, everything is about data uh, processing uh, today right so a lot of things about data and the ai is revolving around that so what's your point of view on that uh, place yeah so honestly data is you can say is the fuel of ai hmm. without data there is nothing data helps you run the analytics data helps you uh, take important decision intelligent decisions uh, you run your entire analysis on data and then you come up with results for so data is data is you can say as i said the fuel the oil that drives ai having said that like uh, to give you an example at microsoft for example we tracked so many we are tracking 130 acts at act 65 trillion yeah, yeah. signals since there is on a daily basis so data is the backbone or the oil that drives ai without that nothing moves it, it enables you to take important decisions and also run uh, deep analytic awesome and i think the vibe Uh, which we are getting here is amazing. The song which the people are playing, the Diwali vibes are coming in. And one thing I will like to come on that uh, right now is you said data helps decision making. So who helps making the decision in Aman's life? Oh. <laughs> yeah, wife is the king, of course. Uh, okay. In fact, I don't know if you have seen that famous Ashish Nehra interview. Mm. That applies in my life too. All important decisions are taken by me. who will win the world cup who who is right is rail or velocity <laughs> who will win the next election and all other decisions my wife takes which car to buy uh, where will our son go to school which uh, which holiday to go <laughs> so okay so so same uh, the same situation at your uh, home okay so tell me more about this uh, who all you have at your family so you have yeah so uh, i have my mom uh, my younger brother uh, and wife and kid Okay, and I think uh, uh, for us the uh, Jaipur is the destination, and for you it's home. You are blessed, I guess. I'm getting feeling a bit of jealous here right now. But anyways, moving forward to the interview. So the point here, you talk about AI, data analytics, and you know today we have lot of uh, technologies and tools which are coming in. But the organization are moving towards the platform, right? So what's your point of view, and maybe what Microsoft is doing in that particular space? So see, uh, there's. always been a confusion or a debate around best of suit versus best of breed okay uh, people say that i will buy the best tool in a particular category but then you have to make them work together uh, i again i don't know where but i was reading it somewhere that on an average every company buys 50 to 60 even 70 tools okay yeah. now imagine making all those 70 tools work together the best thing is categorize the tools in different buckets mm -hmm. maybe like this is my prevention tools this is my last mile tools this is my detection response change management whatever and then try and consolidate those buckets okay and uh, and it works it totally works uh i would also like to give a perspective that see your own life like for example i don't know about others but like i know about you also <laughs> like we we bought iphone tools, yeah then we bought airpods then we never go and buy a smart watch of some other mm, vendor yes yeah we'll buy apple smart watch we have a mac then we will buy um uh maybe a ipad mac and all those things right so we try and consolidate our ecosystem mm -hmm. so that sh data sharing and all that becomes important so that's the same logic that applies and uh, the same thing happened when cloud also came in mm. but uh you will remember like right, in our days we used to buy hard drives store all the data nowadays we just upload it on i cloud or google cloud or definitely cloud. definitely in microsoft also we are trying to consolidate uh we are trying to consolidate but what we are doing is we are trying to position each and every product as best of platform and gartner and forester report states that so you have best of all tools and of course you don't have any issue to merge all them together like the apple example mm nice and uh, a lot of uh, use cases on this with the ai which is helping in the cyber security space and more of different platforms coming in and why don't you share us with some uh, recent use cases and any good case studies yeah uh, ai use cases to be honest are increasing day by day uh, there is a research report done by mit recently uh, it said that 
AI is able to predict 85, 75 to 85% of the cyber attack. Yeah. Uh, till now, if you see, we were buying security tools to make us detect faster and respond faster. Now we are talking about something that will help us predict faster as well. Yeah. If if I can predict something, I can stop it. It's nothing like it, right? We put a CCTV camera, but it's like, if a chori ho gaya, then we see video. <laughs> Who was it, right? Exactly. But if something can be predicted, then it's good, right? So AI is helping in that. That's the biggest use case. Other than that, I think uh, if you ask me, there are like five main use cases. It saves time. What I can do in hours, I can do in seconds, mm. maybe minutes. Not being optimistic. <laughs> Uh, volumes, uh, large volumes I can look into, I can simplify the complex, I can make AI guide me and mm. also I can help skill myself up. If I don't know something, I can ask. So okay. that's the best part. Also, I think uh, a good uh, case studies in the AI space and many, anything specifically which Microsoft is doing and uh, which you like to highlight on that. Yeah, so Microsoft in security, we have a security co-pilot. Uh, what we have done is the security copilot is embedded into all Microsoft security tools mm -hmm. and helps you with almost all categories that I or characteristics that I mentioned. So it helps you save time, uh, act faster, predict a lot of things. And of course, once you predict or once you detect, respond as fast as possible. Amazing. And uh, uh, Aman, before, you know, uh, I must say that it was a great session with you, a great insights, okay? Uh, but I have a one segment where I will like you to talk to my audience directly, okay? And uh, I will ask you to, you know, answer them that if there is any uh, particular, uh, the recent cyber threats which we have, right? How they can actually uh, safeguard themselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, there are a lot of things that everybody says or I can also say to be very honest. Uh, but because this is recent, I'm giving this example. So Microsoft came up with a new uh, with a recent report, uh, which is a threat detection uh, report. Just check it out, it's available for free. Uh, but there's an interesting fact that it says that 99% of the cyber attacks can be uh, can be prevented if you follow basic cyber hygiene, like MFA, ensuring patches are done and all those things, right? Just if you follow those five, six simple processes that anyone asks you, 99% can be so that's my advice. Just uh, follow the process. Keep doing what's important. And uh, there will be zero-day attacks. Uh, there are a lot of attacks. Uh, you see, you hear China attacking India, nation states nowadays, Israel, and a lot of things. That will keep happening. But if you keep, if you keep it simple, keep the process right, 99% of your problems will be solved. That's my advice. Uh, awesome. I think a uh, great answer to the amazing question which I have asked. And it was really uh, nice talking to you. So as a ritual, I have something for you. Uh, so thanks uh, uh, for being on to the GB show. And uh, thanks for being my uh, guest. And I hope you will love this uh, uh, gift uh, from us. And uh, thank you uh, for doing. And let's uh, uh, everyone... Uh, Thank you for listening this. I hope this episode must be an insightful for you. Again, I would like to uh, wish you all a happy Diwali and happy Diwali to you and your family. So, thank you. I'll see you next Sunday and uh, let's have a safe Diwali and enjoy it with your family and be cyber safe. Take care. See you. Happy Diwali.